All right, so now that we're done with the EMF section of chapter seven, let's go into our next section. This is where we start talking about Faraday's law and to get a concept of that, we need to understand that he was trying to grasp that changing a magnetic field or the flux is what will induce a current to counteract the changing magnetic field. So to get primed for these, we have a couple questions to get started. The statement reads, a long solenoid of radius A is driven by an alternating current so that the field inside the solenoid is B of T is equal to B naught cosine omega T in a Z hat direction. A circular loop of wire of radius A over 2 and resistance R is placed inside the solenoid and coaxial with it. Find the current induced in the loop as a function of time. All right. So what we need to know for this problem is the flux, which is the area integral of the field. So B dot DA. The flux rule for motional EMF, which is uh, E equals the negative uh, time derivative of the flux. And of course, we have Ohm's law, which is now written with V equal IR to E equals IR. And then we'll just solve for I. All right, so to start, let's start with the flux, of course, natural starting point. We have a nice little bit of symmetry here. So we just do uh, B dot the area vector A. In this case, that cross-sectional area is just a circle because we have a circular loop. It's important to note that with the with the setup being coaxial, the dot product, the cosine, the since they're pointing in the same direction, that cosine goes to one. Pretty easy there. If you want to set up the integral, you would just do from zero to two pi, zero to a over two, and then r dr d theta, and just simplify that after. But here we can just use symmetry to make that quick work. So then phi as a function of time, after we plug in b is this pi a squared over 4, b naught, cosine omega t. And we can quickly find the EMF by taking the negative time derivative. And we know that cosine goes to negative sine. We also have to use the chain rule on it, so we get another factor of omega out. And so after that simplified, now we just have to apply this to Ohm's law. And if we solve for i, we get e over r, which is pretty simple. And we just simplify down to pi a squared over 4r, b naught, omega sine omega t. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but again, good to test your understanding.